Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to the channel. Hope you're doing well wherever you are. It's been a minute since I posted a story about uh, in the Kenya Finland archives, and so I thought I could bring you one of those stories, you know, family secrets. And um, this time it is touches on uh, granny. So this is a story of a girl I know. Um, a little girl who used to live with the grandmother. Reasons being that um, the mother was living uh, in a different home, in a different town. Because in most traditions in African culture, uh, Kenya to be precise, when you get a child out of wedlock and then you get married, you leave your the child born out of wedlock with your mother, with your elderly mother to take care of your child born out of wedlock. And then you go start a new family with your new man. And uh, that's how it used to be up to, I don't know, five years ago. Yeah. It's uh, most children have been brought up that way that um, you're brought up by your grandmother, even though your father and your mother are alive. When you're born out of wedlock, it is very, very rare that your father takes you. It's often that your mother uh, takes care of you. And uh, when your mother decides to start a new family, they always leave you behind with your grandmother. So. I always say you can never know the true colors of your parents until you're a grown up and now you can see them 3D in like with clear lenses because when we are children, we are children, we believe we see them as our little gods and everything they do is just the best and they are the, you know, you, you don't see it between you don't have a you don't have clear lenses although people who are around you might see but uh, when you're little you're little and you're vulnerable and your sense of judgment is very poor and you tend to think that what happens in your home is general is what happens in everybody else's home anyway let's dive into it so this is a story of a girl who's no longer a girl now it's an adult uh who was raised by the grandmother and uh, the grandmother used to brew alcohol. So the grandmother was uh, a local alcohol brewer. If you're from Africa, you know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. So the mother used to brew alcohol at home and um, sell it. Sell it to the locals. And so the girl had to help with fetching water. Um, I have to mention that the mother went to get married when she was, the little girl was uh, around age 10. So the girl's work was to help granny with uh, fetching water, cleaning up dishes, cleaning up the pots and uh, sweeping around for the guests to come and sit in a clean place and have clean cups to use to drink alcohol. So the girl was 10 years, she was going to school in the evening, she come back and help with all the housework again the following day like that, in the, you know, village life. And um, when she turned 13, the grandmother decided, ah, this one is no longer a girl, it's a woman. Huh? She's a woman. So he decided now, he not she noticed that uh, the guests were really creating interest in the girl you know now her body is changing she looks fine she looks you know you know how teenagers look like now this drunkard who used to come and drink there oftenly men very rare do you find african women going to local um dens for local alcohol local alcoholic beverages is usually the men after they do the work they pass by and have a, a local drink alcohol and then they go home so this girl's task was to now serve the guests because you know now she's bigger she can carry the drinks and take to the guests and her body was looking different and since she was not getting a lot of new clothing she was still wearing the old dresses that were not fitting well the length was short and everything so obviously she was arousing the interest of these men drunkards are drunkards and when they are drunk mm -mm, some of them just their ugliness comes out 
So they start to say funny things, whisper, and uh, others want to, to touch and tease and all that. And the grandma thought, hmm, they are quite interested in my little girl. So, yeah, grandma being grandma and being gangster and wanting to make money from any source, she decided, okay, for those guys who are interested in my granddaughter, if you give me some money, how's about that? So the granddaughter used to complain. Even she had started protesting that I will not serve those guests, you know. Grandma said, if you want to live here, you have to serve them. You have to follow my rules. So poor child with this gangster grandma had nothing to do but to follow the rules, you know. After all, the mother went and got married elsewhere. She hardly ever comes home. She hardly ever calls. So, and the she this girl did not have uncles or aunties to run to. She just had to abide by what grandma says. Like Grandma was like a dictator. Whatever says goes. So, this girl, she just decided, okay, I don't want problems. Let me just follow the rules. So... The girl would just do what grandma says and um, she would go and serve the guests. The, some of the guests would like tease and, you know, start to slap her behind and she would go and complain. And then the grandma says, hey, stop complaining. You are going to chase away my clients. Cooperate. They are the ones who put food on our table, you know. So poor girl, she has to put up with all that nonsense, uh, being uh, abused, harassed. Yeah, so uh, this can, continued going on for a while, and then Grandma decided that okay, uh, if you if you want to do it, then um, like with the customers, like if you want to play with my granddaughter, then pay for it. And so they they started like uh, paying, and then she, when the first time she was just told, okay. Uh, because grandma had a big compound, she had some houses also for rental. She said, okay, uh, take these uh, drinks to that room. The girl, for who? Why? Why can't he drink here with everybody else? She had like five five units, you know, those small, small rooms in the village that she rent out, build from um, uh, bricks. Like, why? Why can't they drink here? Like, no, take in that room. Like, she had... Uh, two or three rooms that were not uh, occupied at the moment. So she was converting it to those people who want to drink and sleep over. They can go and sleep over at a small fee. So this girl would take, she decided, she didn't like the idea, but then she, okay, let me just cooperate, you know, grandma. So she took, first time she took the drinks to this, um, this room and she find the guy and the guy is like, two drinks, like, but the guy was alone and then, uh, when she was just about to go, the guy's like, mm -mm, sit down. One is for you, one is for me. And the girl's like, no, I don't drink. I was just sent to come and, uh, and bring drinks. Then the guy just forcibly stands up and closes the door. Closes the door and uh, tells her, you will sit down because I have paid your grandma this and this amount. We have agreed. And um, that's why you are here. Huh? Poor girl, her heart beating, her started crying, shouting, say, no matter how much you yell, I have given your grandma money, you know. She's the one who pays for your school and your, for your education and your food. So she said, you guys are struggling and she asked for money and I paid her. So you have to give me uh, what I paid for. Huh? So he goes ahead, he drinks and uh, forces her to drink and then he... He, he takes her innocence, you know. And then she goes and cries and complains to the grandma. And the grandma says, you're a big girl. Now you have to help me to make money. You know, if these men are willing to pay money for you, you have to be willing to cooperate. So this girl being alone and lonely and she has nowhere to go and report these things. She decided, okay, she just cries and kept quiet and she was begging grandma please let me even go and find a job then let, don't put me through this grandma say you will do what i say you know gangster grandma mm, a pimp is a pimp you know grandma also used to drink alcohol hey don't play with these grandmas who drink alcohol so yeah 
poor thing she it became routine she serves drinks the ones who want to be left over are left over to go and uh, use her and uh, and pay pay grandma so it became a thing so that's how she went through her lower levels until she was uh, 15 16 years old and then she told grandma instead of you pimping me and taking all the money i might as well just go to the streets and do it by myself i mean what's the point i'm working for you i mean they abuse my body and then you take the money this is where it stops um so after a while the girl decided to run away she had already finished her lower level education we call it primary school in kenya and uh she she, she just ran away she left she went and found a, a job as a house help in uh, in the city and uh, she started working as a house help so this is the story of this girl we'll call her anita so that's not her real name so that's how anita found herself in the streets of nairobi working as a house help and she managed to run away from this uh, pimping grandma you know and uh, she said it left so much trauma in her like um she 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 grew up to really love grandma and her parents because she did not understand why she had to be subjected into prostitution at such a young age her innocence and everything people who are supposed to love and protect her are the ones who are selling her to pedophiles i call them pedophiles because why why as a, why would a grown up man go to pay to sleep with a child you're just a pedophile you know Pe poverty can make people do very sick things but i always say it's not the poverty i think it's just lack of morals these people would still pimp you even if they were rich because the thirst for money they have no morals they do not respect family and the worst part is that uh, such children have nowhere to go and report when they are vulnerable and young you know you've been cut off school even if you're going to school you are told eh, i'm the only, i'm your only i'm the only person who wants to um, stay with you your mother never visits your uncles aunties they they either not in the picture or they are just not involved in your life in any way or manner so that's how anita went through was was pimped by her grandmother for three years uh, in the village yeah it's sad some of these stories that you hear they are very sad and when you when you see how they have affected the lives of these people it's even more sad i hope uh, this story of anita is not going to be replicated across in other families because it's very painful and it's very sad let's protect our children yeah